Ciao, buongiorno. I hope you are all having a great time in the Life Ray Symposium. My name is Danny, and I'm going to talk to you about Life Ray DXP and Life Ray Commerce as a unified solution. As you know, to maintain competitiveness, companies that are not pure internet players, but those who have their roots in pre-e-commerce, pre-Bitcoins, pre-COVID-19 times, they continue to adapt to current times and find and undertake new business models that are enabled by the new technologies, the new demography with all the millennium generation starting to, to work, the new culture, etc. So we are going to focus this presentation on five key concepts. We are not going to discover the wheel here. So all analysts, vendors and consultants agree to highlight uh, these five keys, which are not the only ones, but you know, the time of the talk is limited. So we are going to talk here about individualization, deglobalization, multi-channel, combining B2B and B2C, and agility and scalability. So let's go with the first key concept, individualization in commerce. This topic would be enough for three more talks, but we are going to highlight some important points here. So understanding individualized commerce to dynamically display content, product recommendations, specific offers and tools without going crazy. <laughs> so we want to position personalization, not just as marketing, but also, for example, to help to easily find what the customer needs or facilitating repetitive purchases in order to boost sales and increase conversion. Use your experience in few words. But be careful here, we are taking into consideration also the seller, who is often the great forgotten. And our solution takes the seller, the buyer and the seller into account as one more stakeholder in the solution. So three uh, key aspects in individualization. So first, segment your customers and leads based on past actions, browsing behavior, purchase history, demographics, and other personal data. Define dynamic customer journeys for this different group of user, customizing uh, some specific parts of these journeys. And also facilitate the individualized management of purchases with complete product information, comparison, personalized after sales service, to optimize acquisition and conversion rates, increase cross-selling, and accelerate the return of the inversion in the project. So we are going to start seeing one example. Okay, this is a company that is called Seed. They sell furniture both for offices, hotels, restaurants, and many different types of business. And Seed, they want to offer a personalized experience for these different types of customers they have. So in the left side, we are going to see what's the experience when uh, logs after the login of a customer of the hospitality vertical. On the right side, we're going to see the experience of a customer in the office uh, vertical. So we see that after they log in, they're going to see uh, highlighted different types of products. So hotel products for the hospitality customer, office products for the office customer in different languages, also personalized for the language of the customer. And we also see that, for example, each customer gets a different set of recommendations, okay? Um, more specifically for their business. And uh, also we see on the right side that, for example, only the office customer is going to see this banner that the company is using to let their customers know that they have a new service. They are not uh, selling only furniture, but they want to start selling also office uh, supplies because they have a huge uh, base of office customers and they think it's interesting to expand their business to also being able to offer them also uh, office supplies. So this is just a simple example of personalization. We will see a little bit more later. So taking a, little, a deeper look into the experience of the office customer, uh, she's Alicia. She um, browse the homepage where she can see the highlighted products, their recommendations, and she noticed that there is uh, a new uh, banner 
talking about uh, preparation for COVID-19 for offices. And here, as you can read more about uh, protective elements that this company is manufacturing so the offices can purchase to prepare the office spaces for this uh, coronavirus time. So we can see how we built very easily this landing page using LifeADXP with integration with commerce because now uh, Alicia wants to start a new order because she's interested in this. So from here, she can navigate to see uh, one of the product details, for example, this protective panel, where she can see images, descriptions. She can even have there a, a, a very official description if it's going to be used in an official project. There are different variations of this product with different sizes and different prices. And uh, on top of more specifications of this product, they have also a download section where she can download, for example, a DWG uh, file if she needs to use, for example, AutoCAD to prepare the project. And also some other uh, recommendations of uh, related products to this one to increase uh, upselling, for example. <clears throat> Another way she has to uh, navigate this new uh, range of products is, for example, using a more visual uh, way where she can start configuring uh, uh, her office by, uh, for example, um, she's also in need of chairs. So uh, she's going to navigate from here to the chair detail page where, again, she can see all the details about this product and she starts adding to the cart some units of chairs and she's also, she looks that she wants to prepare a table like this, so she also needs the uh, protective panels. So she's going to start also adding some units of this product to the cart in two different sizes with the two different uh, prices. And she can check at any time how the order is uh, being, uh, how the world is progressing, which uh, items are being added to the cart. Okay, so second concept we want to uh, highlight today is the deglobalization. This is just a fancy word I came up to explain how to turn globalization around because um, buyers, uh, they want brands to speak not only their language, so uh, Italy, Italian for Italy, etc., but they also want to understand that they also want the, the, the companies to understand their culture, their context, etc. So the idea here is to transition from a global website to localized sites, but following a top-down strategy. That is, uh, Life as a platform allows to define uh, global strategies. And then uh, after this, each region can adapt these global strategies to the regions uh, with, uh, with specific parts. So this way, the company uh, doesn't lose this centralized control. And at the same time, it facilitates uh, reusability and uh, to eliminate duplicities in all the different channels for different regions. So here, Liferay helps us a lot by streamlining the embrace of the multi, so all types of multis that you can think of, so multi-language, multi-site, multi-currency, etc. It helps also to reduce and optimize all the marketing assets across all, all the channels. So no need to for duplicities. You can have uh, global assets that can then be uh, localized in the different regions by translating the language, using different images, etc. that are more appealing for the customers in those regions. And uh, with the aim to have a hyper-local focus on business and in the back end, to have uh, each of the channels of its, of its regions being synchronized with the backend of each region, of course. So we're going to see a quick example of this. So this company, SIT, they also have business in Portugal. So they have an, a dedicated channel for Portugal that is the same channel that we saw before, but they, uh, for example, they highlight different products that are more uh, used in this region in Portugal. For example, the, the help desk, they have a very good business with help, help desk in Portugal. So they are going to highlight this. Uh, also, you see that the language is Portuguese, is different. They have other type of recommendations, etc. So let's see a little bit more in depth um, 
how far on the live freight commerce configuration we can uh, adjust each channel to the region in many different ways. So we're going to go to the channels configuration. And first, we are going to go to the main cha channel, so the main B2B channel. And we see here that, for example, we are using a different uh, acceptance workflow to uh, synchronize with the Italy back end for the orders and prices, etc. We have a different payment method uh, enabled here, so because Italian customers are more used to use uh, money order as payment method, and maybe different shipping methods. And for example, we can have a dedicated notification policy where we have we can define different types of notification templates uh, that are translated, for example, in this case, to also to, to Italian. And in the template of this uh, notification, we are uh, signing as Seed Italia, okay, as to make customers feel that they are being served by the, 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 the branch in the region. And if we go now, for example, to the configuration of the Portugal uh, channel, we can see here that, for example, we can select to use a different acceptance workflow. That is the Iberia backend synchronization. So all the orders that come through this channel are going to synchron be synchronized with the backend in that region. Um, here, we're going to enable a different payment method because Portuguese customers are more used to use uh, authorized.net. And again, for example, for the notification policy, we have here different notifications that are translated to uh, Portuguese. And for example, here we see a, a simple example that, for example, the template here, um, when uh, it's written in Portuguese, at the end is being signed by uh, Seed Portugal. Okay, it's a very simple example, but I guess you can uh, see the potential here. So third key aspect uh, is uh, multi-channel, so multi-channel business. Not understood multi-channel as multi-device, but here we talk about business channels, okay? So the idea is to help uh, unifying all the uh, experience across the different touch points, being it uh, online orders from your local stores, breaching with the physical store buyers that maybe are using a digital kiosk, or even retail partners that uh, get commissions for online purchases. So uh, to obtain a specialization based on each channel and allow to continuously add value for the same seller in their retail channels, retailers for mass consumption and large distribution and B2B are uh, happy to embrace these capabilities. And here, um, multi-device is also a key, of course, since, since each market has its own peculiarities. For example, there are a greater use of desktop in, in B2B, uh, a higher use of tablets in retailers or smartphones in mass consumption. But the idea is to unify all these experiences. And here, Liferay helps a lot by all the uh, headless capabilities and the responsiveness uh, of their look and feel to be able to adapt to all these different devices that are used in the different um, channels. So uh, these three main, main ideas, as we saw before, to have individualized configuration per channel. So we can have one single catalog, but many different channels that we can treat differently, uh, depending on things like region. Uh, having different user roles per channel to unify business in a single platform, but with a clear separation by roles. So here you can see all the um, permissions and role definition power of Life DXP, and also this responsiveness and headless to make the platform effective, not only in, on desktop, but also on other devices. So continuing, um, fourth key aspect is combining B2B and B2C, both for mass consumption and for companies, partners, and distributors. So, um, modern times advise that expanding the B2B market uh, also to consumers and small businesses. Uh, so, the, these kind of clients can buy also their products on uh, e-commerce sites. Here are many, many examples. So, for example, in recent coronavirus times, many alcoholic beverage uh, companies 
they had uh, they found a hard way to uh, keep distributing their uh, products through the usual channels, which are restaurants, uh, big distributors, etc., and started opening uh, smaller B two C sites. So uh, allowing um, end customers or small businesses to also purchase these uh, alcoholic beverages like rum, whiskey, I don't know. Or for example, uh, talking about bigger players, uh, maybe you will have also see Adidas, uh, Nike. They have also uh, be, they have been, been very successful with their uh, direct-to-consumer channels. So of course, they're still uh, selling through uh, physical stores, marketplaces, etc. but their own B2C channels are uh, proving to be very successful. So uh, this combination gives greater opportunities, like for example, to, to, to uh, companies and brands, for example, to allow to build a brand and transparency through these public channels. So uh, customers are looking for brand stories and many brands are being now judged on their actions during this time of coronavirus. So this is an opportunity to communicate to the end customers about this time of, uh, of uh, behaviors. Secondly, it gives brands and companies an opportunity to learn more about their consumers. So this rise, this last year, well, it's been rising in the last decade, but this year there has been a great um, bump in, in e-commerce transactions. So this rise has rewarded sellers with an influx of new customers and therefore the opportunity to learn more about them, about their, their behavior, about their, their interests, uh, how they consume, etc. And also uh, it's opening new uh, lines of businesses, like for example, the sale of services to complement the traditional business with uh, the offering of additional services through these uh, public channels. So here we're going to see uh, another example of uh, how to combine the power of Life DXP with Life e-commerce. So for example, Seed, this company, they want to make their, um, their public, their customers aware of, um, of the, the, the B2C uh, channel they have now because they have um, products that are um, very um, uh, suitable to be sold to the, to the direct channel. And uh, they, they built, using live e-commerce, really quick, this new uh, B2C channel, where they can, for example, have uh, this kind of landing pages to uh, build uh, brand history, brand transparency, to inform about their customers about the latest uh, news, for example. And this is um, really easy for marketing, marketer users, non-technical non users, to uh, build this kind of things. But of course, it's still uh, a, a bit an online shop, so they can browse uh, the catalog, the same catalog as the B2B customers, but using different prices, because you can adapt the prices uh, for every different channel of your catalog. So they are not going to be the same prices as in the B2B channel, but they're going to have a special price that is uh, more suitable for end customers that is probably, probably going to be uh, more expensive. So uh, customers can, of course, uh, access this site and finish any uh, transaction. And finally, um, we're going to talk about, a little bit about agility and scalability, which we think that is also paramount for the successful of any uh, sales channels to not be uh, so dependent on the IT department, but to provide um, these non-technical users with all the tools they need to run the day-to-day -day business. No? So our advice is that whatever the use case, it's B2B, B2C, D2C, etc. Uh, it's a good idea to bet on a platform that allows you to quickly adapt to uh, the new challenges of the market and the needs of your business without this being uh, uh, involving a big project with the IT uh, department. So again, the idea is to empower your business users and marketer, reach your client with innovative models, for example, powered by IT. Uh, artificial intelligence to build great user experiences 
and of course keep the integration with the business backend both for uh, the marketing and sales and also for supply and distribution. So here an example of uh, how these um, business users can uh, quickly uh, react to some need they have detected in the market. Like for example, they want to communicate the customers uh, that they are a very sustainable company. So for that, they want to create a landing page. And we are going to see, we are seeing here how this landing page is being created, starting with a master page template. So this is this video is accelerated because uh, this part is covered in, in, in other uh, talks in this symposium. But here we see how easily this business user is building this landing page using different fragments that uh, this user is adding to the page and uh, adding the text and images, etc. They want to um, highlight uh, some aspect of the susta sustainability of seed as a company, that they use recycled materials, that they use uh, green energy in their factory, because they think that this can help uh, boosting sales. You know? And now uh, we see here the integration with commerce, where we um, can see uh, we use here not only marketing uh, elements, but also we are going to also have here using the product publisher. Um, we are going to have here also a list of products that we want to highlight because they are made with recycled materials. So as easy as have this product publisher that want to show um, products that have the tag recycled materials. And this way we have our uh, landing page um, complete with uh, not only uh, information and communication, but also with a list of products that are related with this uh, issue, with this topic. And yeah, here we have we are putting the, the title, and now we see the final how the, the final page looks like. So we have there the sustainability information and also some products that come directly from our catalog and that are really integrated with uh, this landing page. So as conclusions here, uh, use the data. So you have, a, uh, when using a um, combination of Live DXP, Live Commerce, and Live Analytics Cloud, you have a lot of data you know about your customers, about your business. So use it in order to uh, build great uh, individualized experiences. Uh, also get closer to the buyer, give him, him or her what uh, he or she needs. Uh, there are many um, out-of-the-box capabilities in life free products to uh, achieve this. Enable the necessary channels. It doesn't cost that much, as we have seen. Uh, with life free DSP and life free commerce, we can uh, manage our business in a multi-channel way. Also reducing many different uh, marketing and content assets uh, from global to the different channels and also be agile and flexible to provide uh, a good management of your business for your employees, as we have seen with uh, all these uh, tools to, for example, create great landing pages integrated with uh, all the commerce aspects. And that's it. So uh, just to say that all the materials used in, the, in this talk were made with the latest Life Free DXP and Life Free Commerce version. And Grazie and have a great time. Ciao!